What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the e-commerce influence podcast. My name is Austin Bronner. And I'm Andrew Foxwell. I tell you, it's nice to be with you on video. First time, I mean, first time in a long time on video. First time in a long time on video. We, uh, you know, we are thinking about ways we could kind of better improve what we're doing during this time when everyone's at home. And we said, you know what, we should put some videos out. Um, and so it's been on our list. We're excited. We've got the video going. Uh, it's our first time. We'd love to hear back from you guys what you think about the videos. We'll pop them up on YouTube. Uh, but first, this is an exciting episode because this is the first episode we've recorded with you as a dad. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, I, I tell you, it's good. It's uh, life, you know, dad life is good. It's, uh, you know, there's ups and downs, uh, but it's, but it's great. Nora's doing well. She's, she's growing. She's, uh, she's getting bigger and, uh, she's healthy. So like, that's really all that matters. You're looking um, fresh too. Surprisingly fresh. I was expecting, I hadn't seen you yet. I was expecting a little bit more, uh, tired. Maybe, maybe it's the makeup. I'm, yeah, I'm really glad that I look fresh because um, last night she didn't sleep from two to five. Uh, so just not, just didn't want to sleep. Um, you know, so like, what are you going to do? Um, but, you know, coffee does incredibly amazing things. It's, it's actually, it's the most incredible liquid. Um, so <laughs> I mean, generally I feel, I feel good. Uh, and I mean, I'm not going to be, you know, going out running a marathon today, but, uh, but I feel good. And this is a, the morning is a good time. It's a, it's a blessed time now at the coffee. <laughs> yeah. But no, Nora's, it's great. Honestly, she's really, really cute and like, it's, it's pretty cool. So productivity wise, now that you're waking up at two, getting your day started at two, uh, you can yeah. get more done. Oh, I definitely have had the moments when I'm like, well, I'm up. Like, should I just do something? You know, like <laughs> why even try to go back to sleep? Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it, I really, I really like being a dad. I think it's, I think, you know, Jeff uh, from Ugmunk uh, described it properly a little bit the other day on Twitter when he said, I think I have negative time now. I think I went from having some time to now I have a negative amount of time to do things. And that's actually kind of how I feel a little bit. <laughs> so that's okay. Well, congrats. I'm excited uh, for you. And also I'm excited about today's episode because we've been thinking about, uh, we've been getting a lot of questions kind of about what's been going on on the Facebook, Instagram landscape. Uh, and you know, it's interesting. We, we've both had calls with clients, uh, with agencies and have an interesting perspective of, uh, what's going on out there. Right. So, uh, obviously lots has changed, um, in, in the world and, yeah. So today we wanted to, to really dive into what's been working on Facebook and Instagram right now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it, it's, a, it's, it's interesting to, to kind of look at this time. It's very unique. Um, but the interesting thing about our industry generally, there's a, I would say two thirds of people um, or two thirds of, of, of e-commerce companies that I've spoken with. And then two, two thirds of those that are sort of through agencies as well that we work with, we work with a lot of agencies now and, and our consultants with them um, is, you know, those people are scaling actually. Um, and it's pretty incredible because there's just so much more usage. Um, you know, Facebook has said there's 70% increase in time of usage on Facebook and Instagram. Um, or they said they're family of apps, which obviously would also include WhatsApp, but you know, from an ad serving perspective, it's really Instagram and Facebook. So that's, that's incredible because we're seeing CPMs and pricing that we've just really never seen, uh, or haven't seen in a long time. Um, you know, Maybe seen, maybe the last time I saw these was back in the days when I was scaling blenders at eyewear, you know, like back in the 2015, 16 timeframe. So that was a while ago. Um, so what we're going to go over today is basically a, a big laundry list of the research that I've done on, I mean, what we've, what's working for us and then um, posted it in our group, uh, the uh, Facebook and Instagram pro ad buyers group on Facebook. If you're not a member of that, we'd love to have you. Uh, about 1800 strong now, uh, some of the best advertisers in the world. And, you know, people gave us some other ideas of what's working. So that's what we're going to go through. And um, we're just going to fire through them because I want it to be incredibly tactical. Cool. So uh, this episode is going to be great for you if you are running a brand 
and you're advertising on Facebook and Instagram, if you are running an agency, uh, if you're a freelance marketer, anybody who's on paid social, this episode is going to be for you and going to give you some things to try. So why don't we kick it off, Andrew? What, what the hell is working right now? What, what are you seeing? So, so let me go through the, what's working for us first. Um, you know, so what's working for us first is, is first of all, uh, we've seen this in a little bit in the Q4, uh, but is wider audiences on top of funnel. Um, so, you know, this really means sometimes no targeting um, with, with only an exclusion of, you know, vi website visitors or your email list. Um, so the bigger and the wider you can go, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, we, we did see in instances where last year, 1%, 2% lookalikes were, were doing okay. Um, but we've now seen that basically the more leash, we call it in the advertising world, you give an, you know, a top of funnel prospecting audience, the better off you're going to be from a performance standpoint. Um, just because Facebook has more options to show, you know, more places to show it. Um, so that's, that's the first one. Is there, is there any like guidelines on budget there? That's always the question that I have. Like, uh, and, and I get that question a lot. Like when you're going for like a broad audience, is there a limitation on the minimum budget you need to have to be able to target that? Or are you I mean, recommending that across the board? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's tough on the, on a, on a, big wide budget. It's hard to know. Generally my feeling is, okay, if, if you're, you know, let's just take a hundred dollar CPA as an example. Um, you know, a hundred dollar CPA, you want to try to, and I'm not saying you have to exit the learning phase, which would be, you know, 50 conversions in seven days is, is how Facebook determines this. But there's a lot of nuance to this. There's a, things called learning limited. I mean, we're not, I don't want to get into that now, but generally you want to try to walk towards the learning phase. Uh, or walk towards exiting the learning phase. So if you have a hundred dollar CPA and you're going for 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 you know uh, fifty conversions in, in a seven day period, uh, then that fifty conversions, let's just say, uh, divided by seven days is seven conversions a day. Okay. So if you take a hundred, that means that you need your ad set to be seven hundred, you know, or the CBO campaign budget to be seven hundred dollars. So that's a lot. <laughs> and that's <laughs> basically. That's just running one ad, like no tests. Right. So it's like, so it's really a matter of how do you, how do you kind of balance that, right? To me, if I have, a lot of people are, it's common to start with like a $500 a day budget or a hundred dollar a day. It's common. That's like a fairly common thing that we're going to hear. Um, so for me, it's like, okay, can you give it a hundred dollars a day? And can you not, can you try a wide audience and maybe a uh, campaign budget optimization campaign or a CBO of let's say a grouping of 6% lookalikes or 8% lookalikes of 8% lookalike of purchasers, 8% lookalike of add to carts within the last, you know, 180 days or whatever. Um, and, and try those two wide ones, a, a, totally wide. And then, and then a lookalike. Um, and it, it, if even a hundred dollars a day on each of those CBOs, that's an interesting test. Um, and so it's, it's, there's like sort of the answer that Facebook gives you. And then there's sort of like the recommendation and then there's, kind of what you have to do practically as an advertiser, I think. So, you know, it consolidation is helpful from a budgetary standpoint. Sure. Well, I threw you off. So went down the rabbit hole, but that's, just what, that's a good question. What else is working? What, what else are you seeing? I tell you, if you have good Instagram story creative, um, or even if you have user generated content, which is another recommendation that we have of, of really taking things that look like they were, you know, we've talked about this before on this podcast, but you know, things that look like they're from a, a, a supporter or they look more natural, like something somebody would share leaning into Instagram stories and actually separating them out in their own CBO. Uh, in some, in some cases is helpful. Um, it can provide you additional scale, uh, because putting them into their own place, uh, if you, if you combine it, let's say you let Facebook choose many times you'll see lower CPAs on Instagram stories. Um, but Facebook's not going to serve it there as much. So by breaking it out, you do allow for additional scale into Instagram stories. Um, if you have the creative to that fits that platform. Um, that's something that we like to do. It's something that we've seen good performance on. Um, some people want to combine it and they'll, you know, put them all together. Uh, there's a tool that Facebook rolled out called asset placement customization that allows you to choose by, by placement, you know, which, which, um, uh, piece of creative you want by placement, but that eliminates 
Um, a lot, a lot of performance in a lot of cases, we've seen asset placement customization not work as well. I think because if you do it and you do it in the newsfeed, you actually lose the social proof on that piece of creative. So we try to not do that, try to do it on their own thing, try to do feeds kind of in their own CBOs and then do Instagram stories in their own CBOs. So that's a, that's a big, uh, a big one that we have. Um, uh, another one that we have, you know, that, that's related to that generally is, is breaking out the middle of the funnel even more too. So, um, you know, a lot of times people are going to put everything all together in one. They're going to put, you know, uh, uh, let's say an engager audience. You're going to put a, uh, a video view audience. You're going to put a bend to the site in the last 180 days, haven't been back in 30 audience all in one. And combinations can work and you can definitely test that. But we have generally seen that these, these, engagers within or the kind of the middle of the funnel, they behave differently. So separating them out, even in their own CBO, having an engager ad set, having a 75% video view ad set, having a open an email, not purchased ad set, um, Clavio sync, you know, having those in the same CBO is helpful because it allows you just a little bit more control uh, and, it, and it, it tends to scale a little bit better. Um, and so that's, that's another one that we have seen. And I'll give you one more before we kind of recap these. Um, one that Shane uh, mentioned, Shane, who edits a podcast and works with Foxwell Digital, he said is, you know, try a lookalike audience of the last two weeks or the last three weeks of since kind of this all this craziness started, purchasers, uh, because those people are a little bit different than what you were getting purchasers before. Interesting. So Instagram stories, trying breaking out the middle of the funnel and trying some uh, lookalikes of purchasers within some kind of since the craziness started. Well, just to reiterate, like what we talked about earlier, like the reason we're talking about this is that people are continuing to increase advertising spend. Um, I've got two clients who they've hit their best month ever last month and are continuing to increase spend. And, uh, and yeah, this is, this is the type of stuff that, that, that they're doing and specifically, you know, user generated content, Instagram stories, that type of stuff I'm seeing as well. Uh, anything else for that you guys are seeing uh, on like the bidding side or um, on the content side? Like what else is working? Yeah. So, so the bidding side, there, there's an interesting thing. There's, you know, we've always had a discussion in the Facebook advertising community on, um, there's all these different bid types. You have a default bid, which is, you know, you just let it do what it wants to do. There's a bully bid, which is, you know, you, you do a five times the CPA. I mean, there, there's a lot of options here. The one that a lot of people are talking about now is what's called a cost cap. And a cost cap bid is, is basically you, you, you know, it's saying don't go above this. Okay. Um, and this is different than what Facebook has called a target cost, which is get a conversion within this range. A cost cap is don't ever go above this range, whatever that number, or don't ever go above this number. So what, what's interesting with cost caps is they do, in wider audiences, as we've talked about, cost caps seem to be working better. Um, and you can set them at, at or slightly above 10 to 20 to 30% of CPA. Um, and, let, and let it run because it's a way to say to Facebook, hey, I want conversions, but I don't want them to go above this cost. And even if you set it at, let's say, $100, it's rare that you'll see that go above a $70 or $80 CPA. So it never really hits that threshold, um, but they, they are serving better and it's a very, it's a good cost control mechanism. Now, if you're scaling, you know, cost caps are, are hard to, 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 to help with because you're limiting the number that you can hit. Um, but if you're cost conscious, then a cost cap can be helpful for you. And, and they have been serving for a while in the fall, we had an issue with cost caps. They just weren't serving at all. And now they are. So that's something that if you said, look, what's the simplest thing I can do to help scale in this time is, you know, try to do some bigger lookalikes and try to set up some cost caps at, or slightly above that CPA. And I think you're, it's going to kind of be a little bit more in maintenance mode. It's going to be able to run and you're going to not have to worry about the CPAs fluctuating as crazy. And you could have some, you could have one CBO on a cost cap and one not, you know, but that's one thing that we've um, had. And then I'll just mention my, my final one is um, uh, customizing the language that's appropriate to, to the time that we're in. So, you know, there's a lot of nuance to this, but, but utilizing this time and saying, you know, 
like, Hey, we're here for you or Hey, you know, stuck at home. Um, I saw a, um, you know, our, our friends who we've coached on, uh, paid social, they run an artisanal food and beverage company and they put a, they did, they have some gift boxes that they're selling. And the copy that he put out there was, you know, need to step up your game for the next zoom happy hour. And they're doing great with this, right? So like, that's the kind of thing that, that is, is kind of what we're talking about. And you can have an emotional angle to that. You could have something, but, but you could have something that's not emotional. It's just sort of funny. But if, it's, if it um, speaks to that, you're going to be better off. So those are some of the, the big ones that we had that we wanted to mention. Then next we'll go into what we've seen from uh, our friends uh, around the world. The last one I think is relevant just across the board, not just on Facebook and Instagram. It's relevant on the emails that you're writing. It's relevant on messaging on your website, all that stuff. That, that's things that, those are things I've been working with clients for the last couple of weeks on, which is just trying to figure out what your messaging is going to be. I saw one of the best emails I've received so far uh, during this, this, this time from a brand was from Verb Energy, and they they have an energy granola bar. It's kind of a granola bar. It's like a little small energy bar. And they wrote a plain text email uh, that they sent out from the founders, and it said you know, that what their goal was was to uh, donate a million of these Verb Energy bars. So it's a little bar that has a one espresso shot to healthcare workers. That's their goal. They want to, and they're going to give for every two bars they sell, they're going to give away one. And it was so nice and so clear about what the need they were solving was. It was like, hey, we want to just get these on every hospital floor so people can have more energy, can have, and it was just a very clear campaign. It was very thoughtful. It was very simple and it was very appropriate. And I think it probably is driving a lot of sales for them, right? If you give yeah. 1 million, they're going to sell 2 million. So um, it, was, it was quite effective and tasteful. Yeah, I mean, so let me, let, since we're on this topic, let me go into um, a couple of uh, what our colleagues have said on this. So, so Florian Literacy, we've talked about before on this podcast, um, in Germany runs a company called adsventure.de. He's sort of one of my, he's sort of like a go-to in, in Germany for advertising for me. And um, he, he said, you know, try to shift the product messaging as much as possible. He said one of the favorite uh, realignments we did in the last week was a travel yoga mat they rebranded it as an outdoor yoga mat for your workout in nature. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's big. He, and, and then Gil David, our, our friend in Belfast, um, uh, owner of run DMG, he said testimonials and ad copies working better than it ever has before. So test, you know, just having a testimonial in there. Um, and, and then, and finally Alex Afterman uh, lives in Sonoma, California. He said uh, that, I've talked about turning your home into a sanctuary. I've said in certain, in uncertain times, we're here to help you recalibrate for a bath product and something along the lines of staying home doesn't mean you can't look good for an apparel client. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that, those are just some ideas around the language that is something we are seeing that has a, a an actual real effect. Yeah, hundred percent. I think those are both, those are great examples. And uh, on the testimonials and ad copy, the, the, cli the, t the clients that I am working with that are spending the most, both of them are user generated content with testimonials, uh, videos and images of, yeah. of uh, their users talking about their product. Yep, exactly. Um, so let's go a little bit more technical too in some of these suggestions. Um, and these are just things that, uh, again, others have seen to work. So if you are rebuilding or you want to keep testing, um, one is um, there's a, a gentleman, Jake Newbold, who's uh, I believe in the UK. And he said, my favorite and best performing bottom of the funnel campaign right now, it's a conversion campaign running on an auto bid. So no, no cost cap or anything on what I have called a standee audience, which is a one ad set per CBO. Now I'm proud that I, I think I came up with this moniker. Maybe I'm in a fever here, but I think that's what it is. But I thought on Twitter from you a long time ago, you were calling it out. You were trying to, you were rallying, Standy, yeah. <laughs> rallying the audience around you on Twitter. It is. So what this is, so it's a conversion campaign, lowest cost bid. And then he put the view content, add to cart, initiate checkout past 30 days, minus a 30 day purchase, 
all in one. Uh, and then he did it with dynamic creative, maxing out all of the text headlines, image and video. So dynamic creative is, if you've not tried, this is an opportunity for you to take uh, multivariate creative and copy tests and put them all into one and then Facebook figures it out. So, so that's an, an interesting thing that I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do this. Dynamic creative is like hot or cold for me. And I know that, you know, in the recent episode we had with, with that stuck, he talks about dynamic creative being something that, worked. and then he, he wrote me actually recently and was like, you know, it hasn't worked as well, but I feel bad. I mention it. It's up or down. Right. And so, but this is something to try that if you're, um, uh, if you're seeing like think frequencies going up or in your, in your lower part of the funnel and you want some creative options there, that's a, that's an idea for you. Uh, another low funnel option too, from Florian again is, a, is to just to utilize a value optimization in low funnel. Traditionally, we would have not used a value optimization. This is another bid type that finds you the highest return on ad spend. That's the goal of a value optimization. Uh, and we would have used that in more of a prospecting idea or a top funnel. But uh, he's seeing it work in the lower part of the funnel, which means that there's enough people within that value pool um, in Germany uh, that are converting. So that's interesting and not something we would have, uh, we would have tried uh, you know, be, before really either. Well, one thing that I, uh, I know that Florian is also um, saying it's working and something that I've, I've been, been doing as well is using info bars on the site to talking about shipping and whether or not it's, uh, I mean, that's, you got to think about the fear that people have right now, which is like, I was searching for home gym equipment and it's all sold out. So everywhere I'm going, it's like, it's not, shipping until May. And so that's that when people are shopping right now, that's some of the fear that they have that they're going to order something. It's not going to be there. So if your shipping is as normal, or even if it's not as normal, make sure that you lead with those objection busting, um, copy yeah. more on the site. Yeah. I, I, and I think that that's, that's actually a super good point. It's one of those things that when it, when it's written out, I'm like, Oh, that's a great tip. And then, but when I'm as a consumer, it's like, Oh yeah, that's totally logical. Um, because when I go to a website now, the first question I have is like, is this actually going to show up <laughs> or, or like, what's the situation? Right. Yeah. Uh, and so, so that's kind of, that's, that's interesting to me, um, as a, as a good one. Uh, and I, th that was a suggestion that a lot of people had basically addressing that. Um, Jesse Healy, another advertiser UK, she said that we have taken this kind of the UGC example and we've taken a step further putting messaging directly from the founder um, into the lower part of the funnel. Uh, and, and I think you could integrate that on your site too. You know, I mean, I think it, depending on email. how you go about it, thing. email is another great opportunity for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then Chris, uh, Chris Mu Colin, I can never pronounce this guy's name properly. He's like a good friend of mine too. I feel super bad. He works at uh, Lunar Solar Group and Chris's example was mention the delivery date in the ad. So say like delivered by um, whatever, you know, whatever the date is that it's actually going to be delivered by. Um, so I'll go back and, uh, and, and pull up Chris. I asked him how to pronounce his last name and he said it is drum roll McCoolin. 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 Chris McCoolin. There it is. So, um, so Chris had a great tip there and, and, and is, I think I, I wouldn't have thought to put the delivery date in there. Um, but I think it makes a lot of sense if people know a, like a general time frame that they can get it. So yeah, so those are some, those are some quick hits, man. I think, you know, those are some huge things that if you can integrate those into your campaigns, I think are really, are really doing well right now. Yeah. I, I think those are all fantastic. And, um, you know, from an overall perspective, just recognizing that, you know, just a state of where we're at currently, I would say that of the many, many, many clients I've talked to in the last couple of weeks, you know, we got about 20, 25% of people that are 30% are out the same. And then the remainder are down. And that down group is kind of like ranging from down 20, 30%, just softer sales to down like 80% in, in the 80, in the worst case scenario, when people are like, you know, tied into travel. If their product travel related, it's down massively or event related. But 
besides that, you know, we're, we're still seeing relatively uh, strong sales. And my belief is that the reason why we're seeing that is because a lot of the disposable income that people have been uh, dedicating towards other products or other things like, for, for example, going out to restaurants, traveling, all these different things are now being redirected into things to improve their experience at home. I mean, that's what's happening for me. Uh, you know, we're here and I'm digging in for the long haul. So it's like, what, what are the, the small things we can do to make life better? Um, and if mm. you can somehow serve that, um, you're going to continue to do well. Yeah. And I, you know, so it's, it's an unpredictable time. If you have thoughts or other things that are working for you, feel free to join the group, uh, request to join the group or um, email me at Andrew at foxwelldigital.com. And I'd love to hear from you. But uh, thanks for uh, thanks for checking out this episode. And let us know, what do you think about the video? Uh, comment below if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, or, you know, you can always hit us up on Twitter and, and, and let us know what you think about the video. If you should continue doing this, if you have some tips, if you hate it, um, <laughs> let us know. Um, but uh, we're excited to have you. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. We'll talk to you on the next episode.